Hello and welcome to our special show Newsmakers and the Newsmaker of the day, of the week, of the month, maybe even of the year is uh, Kumar Mangalam Birla for creating outstanding value for shareholders of Brasil. Uh, Mr. Birla, congratulations first. Uh, even if I looked at the math on the day of demerger announcement, July 18, five shares of Grasim was 6,500. Today, that, those five shares itself is 7,500. I mean, in just a span of a month, uh, it's 15% more. Uh, technically speaking, only for the finance uh, wing, I think you've almost created 60% more value. So congratulations, sir. Thanks, Nata. I think to put it in perspective, um, we've created about 60,000 crores of value, mm -hmm. both for shareholders of uh, Grasim and of Nuvo. So uh, if you go back in time, at the time of announcing this composite scheme where uh, Nuvo merged into Grasim and the financial services business mm -hmm. demerged uh, subsequently from Grasim and I've got listed today as uh, one entity, Alitibrilla Capital. So if I look at the market cap of Grasim and of Nuvo mm -hmm. as they existed at the time of the announcement mm -hmm. of the scheme and if I look at the market cap of uh, Grasim and AB cap today, uh, it's a difference of about 60,000 crores. We moved from a market cap of 60,000 crores then to 120,000 crores now. Um, so that's been a huge return for our shareholders. And like we said at the time of the announcement of this transaction, that's what's driven this whole transaction. The fact that we wanted to unlock uh, value that has been created over the years for the shareholders of both of these sets of companies. No, no denying that. It's uh, probably a financial powerhouse that has come into existence now. But uh, within that, there are several uh, uh, entities which can be powerhouses in their own right. Insurance valuations are going through the roof, uh, as are pure NDFC companies. Would you ever think of demerging further? So we have no plans, Lata, in the foreseeable future to uh, list any of the verticals that uh, exist today in ABC. Mm. Uh, I think uh, this is a very credible, very substantial step towards uh, value unlocking, like I just said. And no plans to list any of the verticals uh, as we speak today. But uh, valuations are mouthwatering. I mean, you have even a private wealth management company, uh, a wealth management company, a private equity company. Wealth managers are quoting at crazy valuations today. But you know, I think we've created today a whole core for the financial services businesses. Um, it also gives us a currency for uh, making, uh, you know, uh, value creating moves in the future if at all we need to. Uh, it gives us access to capital much more uh, freely, easily. So really don't have the need to list uh, any of the verticals separately. No, uh, for instance, uh, insurance, life insurance. For one thing, it's uh, you know, uh, being regarded very valuable, and that's why you're seeing the HDFC lives and the SBI lives all making a beeline uh, to list. Uh, in your case, uh, you know, Sun Life can also be, uh, you know, you can buy part of their stake. If you list, there are infinite potentials in uh, potential both for Sun Life and for you to create value. So not even for insurance, you would we think have of no plan to do that. So I think uh, I'd say that each player in, in this space has their own script, uh, given their own circumstances, with their own ambitions and plans for the future. Okay. We have no plans today to list. Uh, would you buy Sun Life Capital or something? I mean, any other within so the group itself? Sun Life is very committed to India and to this joint venture in particular. Okay. Um, so they're not a seller, and we're very happy to, ha to have them as a substantial partner. Okay, so the, the uh, equity percentage of the JV partners is likely to remain the same it, in the foreseeable future? It will remain the same, 49% for them and 51% for us. Okay, well, the other question that comes up in the capital issue of uh, uh, AB, uh, uh, AB Capital is that uh, Grasim holds 57% and Grasim has responsibilities towards IDEA. It's a flagship of your group. So would it, would Grasim want to sell, maybe come down from 57 to 51 50, or 49? just so as to capitalize idea. So we have no plans to do that at all, Lata. This has been a question that's been doing the rounds every now and then in the last uh, year or so. And we have said categorically that Grasim will, will not fund uh, ideas uh, plans uh, for growth and for uh, market repair, as if I can call it that. Uh, idea is uh, pretty self-reliant. Uh, mm. It hasn't really accessed uh, funds uh, from any other group company. Uh, we've never really done that in the last 25 years uh, as, a, as a philosophy. And there are no plans to do that now as well. 
Okay. When do you expect that uh, uh, Aditya Birla Capital itself will need capital? After all, NBFC is a voraciously growing business and even uh, your NBFC unit itself is growing at some 40%. So if it were to need capital, when will that be? So we've said in the past that we're happy to look at uh, selling about a 5% stake at max to a financial investor. Uh, I don't think we're in a hurry to do that because we have sufficient capital as of now. But then that's also a function of how fast the NBFC continues to grow. It's grown at about a 44% CAGR in the last five years, which is substantial. Um, but we have the currency, like I said uh, now. Um, and like I said, up to 5% is something that we're very comfortable with. Uh, you know, this is one of your huge cash generating business or profit generating business, as is Grasim, which is why this thought keeps coming back. Uh, Hindalco also is a fantastic performer at this point in time. Aluminum is almost as good as gold or better, but it has debt and so has idea. Will, will it ever happen that any of these cash generation, generating machines will be you know, used to reduce their debt, uh, idea in Hindalco? So Hindalco's debt is very much within manageable uh, limits. Um, it has no issues about uh, you know, any, any concerns about debt at all. It'll have a debt to bit of about 2.5 at the end of uh, this financial year, which is a very, very healthy financial situation to be in. Like I said, IDEA has an issue with debt just now. We know what's happening in the telecom industry. And I think it is going to be a tough phase for uh, at least a few more quarters. Uh, that, that's at least what uh, we estimate as of now. Mm -hmm. But like I said, the IDEA has its own uh, plans to monetize assets, to raise capital in one form or the other. No plans at all for uh, any group company to uh, you know, fund idea in any, any which way. Okay. Well, uh, what about stressed assets? I mean, you spoke about stress, yes, in telecom, but that's not much compared to the way you see stressed companies making a beeline to uh, the bankruptcy courts. Uh, would you, or for, whether within Aditya Birla Capital or outside Aditya Birla Capital, be interested in buying these assets? Very much so. so. So we would see it as a financial play in terms of being a part of ABC. Not to buy these uh, assets uh, as strategic assets for our businesses, but uh, I think that uh, the group has great uh, operating strengths and experience across sectors Absolutely. over the last so many years. Um, and. Uh, that, along with this new vehicle, ABC, gives us the gunpowder, so to speak, mm. uh, to, uh, you know, uh, we, we, we've also, for example, applied for an asset reconstruction company, uh, a license for that with the RBI. Mm. So distressed assets is a situation that uh, we are very interested in. Okay. Will this ARC be uh, uh, coming under Aditya Birla Capital, a subsidiary of uh, That's right. AB Capital? That's right. Okay. So, uh, by when do you think it is up and running? How, how far is so the license? Early to say, like I said, we've applied for a license, yet to get it. Uh, in no hurry to start up. Mm. Uh, we're still looking at plans, we're looking at, uh, you know, how we can make a difference, mm. uh, make a superior return, so, so on and so forth. Okay. But your private equity unit can also, at the moment, uh, the private equity take a strategic investment? can also take... Uh, take up, uh, you know, a, a distressed assets, float in distressed assets uh, fund, mm. uh, which is a possibility. Uh, is it something on the anvil? Because, something on the because anvil, the need but, is uh, it's, it's a very credible option for them. Okay. But uh, aren't you already looking, I mean, lots of power assets, and that's something in which uh, you'll have some experience. Uh, steel, I guess, is not so your industry. So we haven't really thought about specific sectors, haven't gotten down to that kind of granularity. Okay. But uh, suffice to say that as... Uh, as, a sp as a business of turning around mm. stressed assets. It's a space that uh, we are keenly interested in. But is there any specific sector of turning around no, not or, or really, the not entire at all. game? I think that, uh, you know, we're agnostic to which sector. Okay, okay. No, I mean, a lot of them will come in, you know, the, the bids will start opening. In fact, bids have already started coming for a couple of them. They'll start coming uh, in 2017 itself, and of course, many more will come in 2018. So, should I see the ARC as well as the private equity uh, getting into granularity as early as 2017 or early 2018? I think financial year 18-19 uh, will be the right time. There's no hurry. Uh, we've got to sort of firm up our plans, get our uh, act together before we can actually start to 
do business in that space. Mm -hmm. Which of your business you think will run the fa fa fastest? You have NBFC, life insurance, housing finance, health insurance, uh, private so equity. Think, uh, Which most do you of think? These, I think the NBFC for sure, life insurance, health ins insurance is a new one that we've launched and has taken off to a good start. Uh, I think all of these housing has uh, done very well, affordable housing. We're talking about, like I said, uh, a potential foray into the ARC business. So I think all of these uh, cumulatively will add to the growth of um, ABC. Okay. Well, finally, let me ask you, I mean, you have a vantage point where you see a bunch of industries. You see how cement works, you're seeing how metal works and uh, textiles. Uh, what is the sense you are getting about where India is in the growth cycle? Has it troughed out or will this be a U-shaped and, you know, we're going to see a little more slowness before speed picks up? So I don't know about shapes, uh, Lata, but I think that uh, uh, manufacturing is something that has yet to pick up. Okay. And I think that goes back to the problem of distressed assets, which impairs the ability of banks to lend. And I think that uh, the RBI, the banks, the government uh, are very appropriately focusing on the issue of uh, resolution of uh, NPAs, mm -hmm. uh, which in turn would free up the balance sheet of uh, companies and give more leeway to the banks to lend. Mm -hmm. um, I think that the government is doing all the right things. Um, and. Uh, Given the fact that this is a very complex situation and India is a very complicated uh, country to work in, yeah, I think it's only natural that it will take some more time before things start to uh, look even better. But uh, uh, do you see green shoots, for instance, say in cement, uh, the g government after all has given a lot of orders and... Uh, I think there are uh, segments of infrastructure, for example, where uh, the government has uh, started to spend substantially. And I think it will have to be a step-by-step -step process. Uh, like I said, it's a very complex uh, country and uh, several issues to look at at the same time. And I think that the government seems to be getting their priorities correct. Okay. Well, again, uh, since you look at so many industries, you're looking at uh, steel, uh, sorry, aluminum, textiles, uh, telecom, now financial services. Uh, which is your favorite child? Uh, you can't play favorites. I think that... Uh, we believe uh, in each of these businesses, which is why we are in these uh, businesses. I think each has their own comparative landscape, their own uh, sort of challenges, but I think all of them have uh, very interesting growth opportunities, which is why we are in them. Okay. Now, uh, which do you think runs the fastest as of now? As of now, when you look at these so four major at, verticals. Um, our uh, current uh, stable of businesses, obviously, uh, financial services is. Uh, is a vertical that's the fastest sprinter. growing. Um, just given the fact that um, India is so hugely underpenetrated in terms of the use of uh, financial products and services. Mm -hmm. No, that certainly is the case. At the moment, it's running hard. But say, for instance, cement. Do you see that on an uptick now, uh, considering it, you know there are a lot of projects that people are. Talking I think about? so. I think that uh, as the government is stepping up its uh, spend on infrastructure. You're going to see robust uh, demand for cement going forward. Mm -hmm. So I remain very bullish uh, in terms of uh, demand going forward. And there's one more industry which I didn't touch on, retail. I mean, retail also is picking up. We're seeing the shares do well and we're seeing, you know, footfalls also improving. Consumption is the theme. So uh, do you see big plans for uh, your retail forays as well? So we have a separately listed uh, fashion yes, retail company. that's exactly why. And I think uh, the company is doing well. I, we're seeing... a month-on-month -month increase in SPSF in uh, every sort of uh, parameter that you look at. Uh, and that's another sector that I think is poised to do very well. Okay. No, you know, we always think, speak of uh, Tata's, Birla's in one uh, breath. And we've seen the Tata's tie up with uh, companies like Zara. So are you also taking Aditya Birla fashion to that level where you are, you know, going to uh, Well, they have a few uh, tie-ups already, like uh, Hackett, for example. And there's a whole slew of uh, initiatives in the pipeline on that front. Okay, so is that the next big game, retail? Well, I think uh, that is a very interesting uh, game in, its, uh, in itself. Again, a, a big uh, growth story. It's uh, a mega trend uh, in terms of uh, higher spending uh, capacity and uh, the demographic uh, of being a much younger population that that business plays to. You have given me a rain check for a more detailed explanation and a detailed description sure. of your plans and other words. Sure. Thank you very much.